The Hoffman elimination is an E2 reaction of an amine, and it can occur after the amine has been converted to a good leaving group through exhaustive methylation. The reaction has three steps. The amine is first treated with excess methyl iodide, thereby converting it to a quaternary ammonium cation. And the counter ion for this cation is initially iodide. In the second step of the reaction, aqueous silver oxide is added, and this results in the precipitation of silver iodide, and hydroxide then plays the role of the new counter ion. Finally, upon heating, hydroxide removes a proton from the less substituted beta carbon to afford the Hoffman elimination product, which is the less substituted alkene. In the first step of the reaction, the amine is exhaustively methylated through treatment with methyl iodide. The reaction begins with the attack of nitrogen on methyl iodide and iodide is concurrently displaced in this SN2 reaction. The ammonium ion can then shed a proton so as to restore a lone pair to the amine. And this new amine is nucleophilic yet again, so it engages in another SN2 reaction with methyl iodide. The last proton on nitrogen is then lost, which yields a dimethyl amino group on the substrate. One more SN2 reaction with methyl iodide installs a third methyl group and affords the quaternary ammonium cation, whose counter ion is iodide. In the second step of the reaction, Aqueous silver oxide affects a counter ion switch. Silver iodide is formed and precipitates from the reaction mixture, as denoted by the arrow pointing down. Hydroxide is the other byproduct formed from silver oxide, and it serves as the new counter ion for the quaternary ammonium cation. Upon heating, an E2 reaction occurs in which hydroxide removes a proton from the less substituted beta carbon. A carbon-carbon pi bond is then formed as trimethylamine simultaneously dissociates as a good leaving group. The product is the less substituted alkene, which is known as the Hoffman product. In our previous considerations of elimination reactions, in the videos on E1 and E2 reaction, we learned that there is typically a preference for the more substituted alkene product, which is known as the Zaitsev product. However, in this case, that preference is reversed. And the rationale for this reversal is found in the transition state for the elimination. Recall that E2 reactions require an antiperiplanar orientation of the proton and the leaving group that are lost during the transformation. During formation of the Hoffman elimination product, the transition state with the necessary geometry contains no destabilizing interactions. Notice how the proton and the leaving group are arranged antiperiplanar to one another. However, if a proton is removed from the more substituted beta position to form the Zaitsev elimination product, there is a Gauche interaction between the bulky trimethyl amino group and the methyl group on the more substituted beta carbon. This 
unavoidable steric clash destabilizes the transition state, making the pathway leading to the Zaitsev product higher in energy. In the following example, a cyclic amine undergoes Hoffman elimination. In this instance, the dimethylamino leaving group remains tethered to the alkene in the product. As expected with Hoffman elimination, during the final E2 step, a proton is removed from the least substituted beta carbon, which is beta rather than beta prime or beta double prime in this example. The reaction begins with exhaustive methylation of the amine. In this case, that requires only two rounds of alkylation. The first SN2 reaction affords an ammonium salt. The ammonium salt then sheds a proton to restore its nucleophilicity as the nitrogen reacquires its lone pair. The next SN2 reaction affords a quaternary ammonium cation that can be methylated no further. During the second step of the reaction, the iodide counterion is swapped for hydroxide when silver oxide is added to the mixture. Finally, Upon heating, the E2 elimination occurs. Hydroxide removes a proton from the least substituted beta position, and the pi bond of an alkene is formed as the dimethyl amino group dissociates. In this case, since the substrate was cyclic, the leaving group remains tethered to the alkene in the product. In summary, the Hoffman elimination entails E2 reaction of an amine that has been converted to a good leaving group through exhaustive methylation. There are three steps to the reaction. The first is treatment with excess methyl iodide to achieve the exhaustive methylation of the amino group. The second step is treatment with silver oxide which causes the iodide counterion to be swapped for the more basic hydroxide counterion. Finally, when heated, the E2 reaction occurs. Since E2 elimination requires an antiperiplanar arrangement of the proton that is removed and the leaving group, the energy of the necessary transition state must be taken into account. Due to the steric bulk of the methylated amino group, the lowest energy transition state is reached through removal of a proton from the least substituted beta carbon. This results in the Hoffman alkene rather than the more substituted Zaitsev alkene. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms a color-coded approach to arrow pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.